we think that God doesn't know anything about, but in reality, God knows everything about. So how do we handle that? How do we handle coming to God with things that, you know, we have deemed impossible, others have deemed impossible. Jesus was confronted with that opportunity, and we're going to look at that Bible passage today. As Jesus finds himself being confronted by uh, even his own disciples, when faced with a need, told the man, I'm sorry, I don't think God can do anything about this. Um, and, you know, Jesus had a little frustration point with the disciples every once in a while, you know, and the frustration comes out in today's scripture, as we are going to read here in a few moments, an opportunity for us to just kind of put those things back into its proper order. So if you have come with impossible situations today, I have good news for you. We're going to deal with that, handle that. We're going to uh, spend some time in prayer over those impossible situations, and we're going to loosen our grip on holding on to some of those impossible things. We're going to give them a good dose, a prescriptive dose of, uh, of what's called God's promises and, um, and, and God's ability to tell us where it is we need to do, what we need to do with it, where we need to go with it. As someone said to me, it's important for us to loosen up our grip on some of those things. Otherwise, God will hurt our hands when he wrestles them out of our, of our grasp and say, don't hold on to that anymore. And if that's what church is all about, that's what God's all about. We need to be able to come and say, God, I got some, I got some big deals for you. Let's see if you can handle this. And like a loving father, our God says to us, that's what I've been looking for. Uh, you know, the size of our, 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 our God is represented in the size of the request that we bring to God. You know, what do we reserve from God? Do we give God just the little stuff or do we give God the big stuff? We're going to look at that together today. I want to welcome all of you that are online together today, whether this is your, uh, whether you're here in the sanctuary, which many people are, or online, or will be with us a little bit later on on YouTube. We're glad to have you as part of that. For those of you that are online, be sure and register your attendance together today. Just put down the number of people, where you're at, those kinds of things. We just love that and put that in and we keep track of all of that. So thank you for putting that together and making that happen in a good way. Uh, we're also going to have prayer requests a little bit later on today as far as our prayers go. And so if you have a prayer request, please just put that in the chat line and send that to us and we'll be sharing those. If you want it to be a private request, just put private when you do that on the chat line, send that to us and we'll be more than happy to connect and to uh, have an opportunity to lift those things up in prayer. That's what it's all about. That's why we're here together today because we have a God that's big enough and we have a faith that's large enough to say, God, you know what? I gift it all to you. This is called Holy Sabbath. Sabbath. This is what it's about. So let's begin. Church, happy Sabbath. happy Sabbath. I love it. Yes. And you know what? We need a day of rest, don't we? I won't show for our hands, but in reality, we need a little bit of rest sometimes. So this is what God offers us. That's what Sabbath is all about. A time and a day of resting. That's what it's about to give it to you. We also recognize that Jesus is alive. The first day of the new week is when the resurrection occurred. That was called the Sabbath day. And that's the day that we worship together today. And also for a day of worship where we come together as the people of God in this sanctuary in order to reconnect ourselves and to re-tap into the resources that God gives us, the power that God gives us. So that when we leave this place, we are filled up, just not to take it home and hold on to it, but to take it back out in the world and to share it with those who we find in needs that come to our life. The joy of the Lord, it says, is our strength. And we're going to share that joy uh, together with us uh, today. So I think next we're going to do a prayer as soon as it comes up here. I... I'll take whatever you give me. Okay, very good. So there we go. And uh, I think, give me the next slide if you'd like to. I'd appreciate that. So scripture talks about with all things, God is all things, with God, all things are possible. I'll get that right here. And God helps us to redefine that. In Matthew, the 19th chapter, um, Jesus says these things. He says that with man, uh, there are a lot of things that are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So the Message Bible, I love the way they put it. Here, here's the paraphrase of the Message Bible. No chance at all if you think you can pull it off by yourself. That's, that's pretty practical, isn't it? 
you got impossible situation. You know what? There's no chance at all. If you think you're going to pull it off by yourself, but then he writes this, but every chance in the world can come if you trust God to do it. That's where we stake our faith today. It's called redefining. It means examining something, evaluating something and with a view to change. Now, there's a lot of us who don't handle change real well. I mean, let's be honest. I'm one of those people. And sometimes we go into a situation going, I will not be, what's the old song go? I will not be moved. I will not be changed. We've never done it that way. The seven last words of the church. I mean, you know, I'm not ready for that. That's not what it's about. But in the world in which we live, we find out we are up to and in the midst of change all around us. And it scares us. Guess what? Hear this word. God is ahead of the change. <laughs> God is the one who's directing those things. He just calls us to line ourselves up. And sometimes where we're unwilling to deal with change and with the things that are happening in the world is because sometimes we just don't see to exercise our faith. And we don't exercise our faith by saying, God, I know that you are in control. I know that, God, you are standing in the shadows. You oversee the change and the, and the difficulties that go in the world, but you balance it out with faith that we have to see that God is in the midst of those situations. I mean, we've been through pandemic. We've been through all the riots, everything that's gone on. And most of us look at it and say, that's an impossible situation. I've heard people use that word. But God redefines what is possible. God redefines what is possible. That's what we're going to look at today. Hold on to that. Have you ever had times in your life where all of a sudden circumstances just seem absolutely impossible? Yes, I'm there one of those people, times when, you know, relationships break down and things that all of a sudden long held bad habits, they hold on to us, all kinds of stuff take place, pain, illness, uh, life is just plain hard. You, you know what I'm saying? It's a difficult time. And we oftentimes wonder what the outcome is going to be. And so we pray about that. Now, the one of the challenges is, is that what's the old country Western song say, thank God for unanswered prayer. <laughs> And sometimes the very thing we pray for, God may say to us, I'm going to gift it to you, but I'm going to give it to you in a little different form because you know what? I know the past, I know the present, and I also know the future. And I want to give an opportunity to direct us into those moments in those times. That's why we, in full, we trust it over to God. Impossible situations, you know, we, we do not know tomorrow, we don't see tomorrow, but we know God, we know the faith and what God has done, and we turn it over to our God. So that sometimes we just want to pray that prayer request that knows that God can make all things possible. Redefining, that's what we're going to look at today as part of our worship service. So as we begin today, none other than Janet, the blessing of musical talent and ability, is going to share with us a little music in order to open up our worship service together today playing her pregnant. Janet. I have this little sign up here today that says, pause three seconds before you move from one thing to another. They could adjust the dial, so I just counted it out all. So let's join together as we pray together on this Sabbath day of worship. Let's pray together. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is here. Jesus is here. We are here, joined in Sabbath worship. You know the song, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. We are open and ready for the joy of the Lord and the Spirit to infill us. Come, Jesus, into this worship this morning. Come, Jesus, into our hearts and into our lives this morning, for our hope is built on Jesus. And all the people said, 
Amen. 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 So what better to do than to join together in singing that song? Our hope is built on nothing less. Let's give it a try. great chorus that's called only believe do you remember that song only believe oh, oh. there is a great hymn chorus that starts out by saying only believe you know that's only believe only believe all things are possible only believe and then that one of course lord i receive lord i receive all things are possible Lord, I receive. There's a wonderful story that comes to us from Mark, the ninth chapter, very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And, and um, I'll share it with you today. It's a story about a man who brings his son to Jesus to be healed. Um, there are a lot of people who brought their family members or themselves to come and to be healed before Jesus. But this is a, a man, a father who brings his son before Jesus in order to be healed. And, and, and he comes to Jesus and uh, and, and all of a sudden, he begins to ask the disciples if, uh, you know, if Jesus could be able to touch or heal his son. And of course, the disciples' responsibility uh, was to simply say, of course, all things are possible with God. We've heard Jesus preach about this before. Bring your son up. And all of a sudden, he says to the disciples, what should I do? And the disciples say, what? I think this is impossible. I don't know if Jesus can heal your son. And all of a sudden, they begin to doubt what Jesus could do, anything about this poor boy and what was going on in his life. So the man goes up to Jesus, and of all things, he repeats the words the disciples said <laughs> to Jesus. And he says, uh, hey, Jesus, uh, can you do something about my son? Your disciples said that they didn't think it was possible. So if you can do something, I'd really like it. Now, this sets off the trigger for Jesus, you know. Uh, and Jesus looks at the people around him, but especially the disciples, and he says to them this, what a generation. Have you no sense about God? Have you not been listening? How many times do I have to go over these things, he says to them? How much longer do I have to put up with this kind of stuff? Oh. Now, if there's ever a time you wonder if Jesus ever had a little frustration to express it, it's in this passage of scripture from Mark 9. <laughs> Because Jesus says, I have an expectation of my believers. And all of a sudden, you guys fail me sometimes. But he said, I love you unconditionally. And I know that God's at work in your life. And I know you're going to take over my ministry after I leave. He tells about those things. But he said, I'm going to tell you what I know. I know, he said, that God is able to do this. So what does he say to the disciples? Bring the boy here. Bring the boy here. And so what did they do? They brought him. Jesus asked, that's what we'll do. We'll bring the boy. When the demon inside of him sees Jesus and knows exactly who Jesus is and the power that he's dealing with, suddenly the demon takes this and puts this boy into a seizure, calling him to lay on the ground and writhe around and to foam at the mouth and all kinds of things. And Jesus looks at the boy's father and he says to him, how long has he been doing this? And the father said, ever since he was a little boy, many times it pitches him into fire to try to destroy him. Sometimes it throws him into the water to try to drown him. The enemy brings death. It, it causes us to take away those, those faith and belief of what God is able to do. Then the father said to Jesus, or the man said to Jesus, if you can do anything, do something. 
And Jesus looks at the father and he says this, if, if I can do anything, uh, and the man says to him, don't you have a heart, Jesus? Won't you help us? Jesus said, if, it, there is no if among believers. How many of you are believers today? Don't have to raise your hands. I'll just take it to be. But he's speaking to us. He says to us, the witness that we are to have before the world, he, he said, there is no ifs among the believers in God. Anything can happen. Only believe. What a story. Isn't that amazing? Everything is possible. Only believe. Anything can happen. So there's a hymn chorus. Talked a little bit about it. We're going to try it together today. It's a song called, remember, Only Believe. Let's try it together. Just the chorus. among believers anything can happen only believe let's try it one more time oh. Now, do we pray for the impossible things in our life? I mean, yeah, but, but, but are, are, we, are we open to a thing? And for some of us, we, we've been there. I mean, we just abandon ourselves to that kind of faith. That, that's what Jesus said, that everything is possible with God. But sometimes our God is so small that we limit what, what God can do in our hearts and, and in our lives and in the circumstances and situation of our life itself. So um, in Matthew, the seventh chapter, the seventh verse, Jesus said this, keep on asking. And he doesn't put an end to that. Not once, not twice, not three times. Jesus says, so it's not just one time, even though, you know, we do. But he says, you need to also learn persistence. And it's not so much to get God's attention, but to get our attention. <laughs> Sometimes we just go, God, can you handle this circumstance or situation? And then God, don't hear what God wants you. And we go, well, God can't do anything. God can't hear me. That's the way it goes. That's not the situation. God said, I want you to learn on keeping on asking, irregardless of what you see, what you hear, how you feel, keep on asking. And he says, you will receive what you ask for. It may be in a different form than you think, but the prayer request and the answer will come. Keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Seek and find. Knock. Keep on asking. So um, what I'm asking for today is for us to look at a situation where all of a sudden, we believe that God can actually do the impossible. It's so simple. The words are there, but we fall into this trap as part of our life of not thinking that can happen or understanding that what is possible with God. So even though I asked him a thousand times before, I, I have to come to a place where I am confident that God hears 
and answers my prayers. That's the mark of us as a believer. So that, that God will hear our prayer and then will reply to us with his love by demonstrating that for us. This is all so simple. We've heard it so many times before, but now we need to put it into practice. You see, I believe that some of us here have come here today out of sleepless nights, out of worry and fear over some circumstance or situation or person in our family, in our life. We prayed about them. It doesn't look like things are happening. We just shelve it away. We don't talk about it. We don't share it. We don't invite other people to pray for us as part of that situation. This week, I was dealing with a, a circumstance somebody called me about and everything else. And I said, we'll, we'll be praying about that. And this was like a person coming to a fountain of water when you're, when you're dying of thirst. And they said, oh, will you please pray? I'm exhausted. I don't know where to go. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to pick up the burden for you. I'm going to keep on praying for you while you take a little rest. <laughs> I'm going to keep on praying because I know everything is possible with God. You just hold on to that. In Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter in the Old Testament, here's what he says. Oh, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth by your strong and your hand and your powerful arm. He says, nothing is too hard for you. Jeremiah, the prophet, speaking those words of God to us. I, in the Lord, your God, of all the peoples of the world, is anything too hard for me, says the Lord. And the answer is no, nothing is too hard for you. I mean, we go out, we look at the beauty of the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything that's around us and everything else. And you know what? We realize that God sustains it, puts it together and builds it by his gracious hand. You talk about impossible. We can't do those things, but God can do them. And so all of nature, all of world is a, is a constant reminder to us of the beauty of what God is able to do and the power that God has in our lives. Um, so, um, I want to take a moment for us just to conjure up, open up doors, break down walls of all those things we've locked away as impossible situations, things that maybe we've just given up on, or we've just been tired of praying. And what I want to do this morning is just to take about 60 seconds in order for us to come to a place where we just give those over to God. I mean, we've got busy lives, but now I can create a little space for you here for the next 60 seconds. I want you to open up that door and I want you to offer those things to God. Even if you've prayed them out, even if it's, it's hard for you to do that, I want you to take the opportunity this morning, especially as we lead into this service and into all that we're going to do to remind ourselves that things, these things, all things are possible with God. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. God, we come before you today knowing that, uh, that we have sometimes fallen short of your mercy, of your goal, and of the words that you've offered for us. God, we have things that we had locked away in our hearts and in our lives for, for so long. We've got people that we've actually said, God, I just give up on them. But thanks be to God, you do not give up. You do not give up on them and their circumstance and situation. And even more gracious, you do not give up on us. We have people here and people in other countries. We have circumstances and situations, God, that that we think to ourselves, I'm just a small person. I'm, it's impossible for me that God said, that's right. You can't change anything. You, you can't do it, but I can. So come to me, all that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn about me. Share with me the impossibles. And as a loving father, I rejoice in knowing that your faith is strong enough and big enough to offer it back to me, a God who can bring about miracles in our life. So God, we take 60 seconds in quiet and in silence just to offer these things as we cleanse ourselves of our holding and grasping and as we offer to you these requests and needs.
Thy will be done. Please, Father God, do what only you can do. Help us by your grace. And all the people said, amen, amen. There is a song that you are listening to this group of uh, folks from um, India singing. It's a little song called uh, Nothing is Impossible with God. Uh, it's a beautiful song. It's found in a lot of hymn books uh, back in about the 1950s and 60s, um, but written by one of the guys who was with the Moody Bible Institute. Um, and uh, this is one of his songs. It's got a great little tune to it. Um, but anyway, join it as we go along. Uh, for nothing is impossible with God. Here we go. I love that little tune. I think it's kind of moves together and puts it together and it speaks the words that nothing is impossible with God. Um, a few years ago, there was a young man by the name of Spencer West. Um, Spencer West was uh, from here in the United States and um, he was a remarkable young man. He had a debilitating childhood illness and therefore uh, he was forced to, they were forced to remove and amputate both of his legs. But he grew up with a, as a young guy that could just, you know, conquer mountains, just do anything he wanted to do. And so when he came out and he said, uh, I, I want to have a task of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa is, is the highest freestanding mountain. You've seen pictures of it, uh, what it looks like at that point, 9,300 feet uh, at the very top. And, and so... Um, Spencer West uh, went there to Africa and, and people were like, how in the world? I mean, some people make it to the top, but how in the world can you? You have no legs. And, and um, so they asked him, they said, why would you do this? And he said, because I want to redefine what is possible. That's what I want to do. I want to redefine to the world and especially to people who have debilitating conditions about, you know, what really is possible in being able to do. I, I tell you that story because I think it relates very well to, to what we're talking about in this passage of scripture together today, because Jesus in this passage of scripture says, uh, I'm going to present a model to you. I, I don't know about you, but I love to have somebody give me three steps to a uh, healthier life or losing 40 pounds or something else. I mean, we, we get into that kind of thing. Uh, that's what it's all about. Well, Jesus in this thing, offers up for really one of the first times a prescription for not only the man who brought his son, but for each one of us as believers. Let me repeat that so that I've got you online with me. That the three things that Jesus offers up as his suggestions in the story about what, what Jesus could do for this young man was offered up and given to us as an example that we can emulate in our lives. So for those situations and circumstances that you and I have in our life, we're trying to figure out what to do with them. Jesus says, there's three things I want to look at. We're going to look at those this morning. The first is really this idea of identifying what the problem is. I mean, what's going on? What's happening? Sometimes we get so worried about difficulties and, and things that are going on in our life. We fail to sometimes understand what the problem really is. And to understand the problem is not so much just a practical problem, a physical problem, but it's a spiritual problem for us sometimes. 
That's what he was saying with the disciples. The problem is you're not applying the faith that I've talked about in circumstances and situations. For strange reasons, somehow we put up this barrier. We, we say to ourselves, a choice, a decision of what's okay or not okay to give to God. What, what is too big and what is too small? As I said before at the beginning, you know, the size of the, the size of the prayer that we offer up to God, the things we offer up to God talks about the size of the God that we have. And sometimes we limit the size of God by, by making that choice and decision. But as believers, we're to come to God with the situation and circumstances and we're to offer it up to God. First thing God does, Jesus does in this story, is he says to them, he said, let me find out what the problem is and I'll identify it and put it together. The second thing he talks about is I'm going to offer you a prescription. I'm going to tell you what you need to do now with that whole thing. I love that part. God just doesn't say, speak it, say it. But now let me tell you what it is you need to do. Now, let me be honest with you. A lot of us love to go to the doctor. Excuse me. We go to the doctor and the doctor gives us some medication, right? And we, we, we love it. Sometimes you feel better after you go to the doctor, even before you take the medicine. You know, you ever get to that place? Oh, I just am so happy to find out it's not this or that. Other things. We come home. We fill our prescription, we get home, we take about two pills, and then even though we have pills for two weeks, we take it for two days, I'm feeling better, I won't take any more pills, there it is, I'm done. Now, most physicians will tell you that's the worst thing you can do. Start out by taking not the entire series, but only a few, and then stopping. And then, good luck. Ah, he says, I'm going to give you a prescription, I want you to take it home, and I want you to follow it. <laughs> I want you to do it. You know what the problem is? I'm going to give you a prescription. You take it home. You do exactly what I'm going to tell you to do. And then as a result, you're going to see what's possible in this situation. And then you're going to be about the task of demonstrating, sharing it with others, talking to them, sharing the word to another person, letting them know what is possible in this circumstance or this situation. You will be living witnesses in this moment. Uh, a week ago, um, one of the members of our family, uh, Mark Lane, his sister, um, and her husband were expecting a, a baby. She went in for her 20-week checkup, and uh, the doctor said, uh, I can't get a heartbeat. I have no idea. And, uh, man, they went back the next day, had several more doctors to make the prescription of what was going on and what was happening. It was... Uh, it was that the baby is no longer alive and the baby. Um, this coming week, I'm going to be doing a funeral um, for her and for the family. And the reason I say this is because when I wrote her and told her we we're going to be praying for her uh, right before she went into the procedure, I, I just said to her, I said, you know, I said, we, we know, Connie and I know what it's like to lose uh, a baby. We lost our very first. And I said, then they told me, they said, now, when you, when you get to be a pastor, I feel sorry for you, one lady said. And I said, what's that all about? And she said, well, she said, because you're going to find a lot of people in your congregation and people in the world who are going to go through that same path, they're going to walk that same valley where they lose one of their children. And said, at least you're going to be able to speak to them, not out of some third party understanding, but from people who've gone through that path with them. Yesterday, I had a chance to talk to her on and uh, we just talked about things in her life. And I just talked about things that we'd heard, we'd done as part of ours when we lost our child. And I said, you know, I said, I want you to understand in the midst of all this situation, it seems absolutely impossible. There's an impossibility of having another child. But you know what? I, I'm telling you that things are possible with God and believe in that. And that's what our service is going to be about. It's going to talk about those things about how God gives us hope, God rescues us, God brings us back. God seeks to make his presence known in our life and in our living. He gives us the possibilities of what it is that we have. All we have to do is to do something with it, to share it, to be that person of hope and ministry in the world in which we find ourselves living. So the first thing was problem. Uh, Jesus comes out and he says, you know what? I understand. I know what the difficulty and the problem is at this particular point. And the problem is what you just said in your response. And that was, if I can, Jesus said, let me tell you what he said. Yes, I can. <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can do this. 
I have the faith, I have the mercy, I have the love, the grace for you in order to seek to make a difference in your life and in your living. I want you to hold on to that and I want you to make that kind of a forefront reality of what's going on in your life and, and, and what's happening. Uh, in one of my churches, I'm, uh, every midweek we would have a um, midweek kids club. And uh, I got to be the person who headed up the, the music and kind of dealt with them and all that. And I said to them, I said, uh, you know, I got a song to teach you. You know, if you've been vacation Bible school, you know this. And I do this little song. And the little song was called uh, Gar God is Bigger Than. Uh, my God is so big. My God is so mighty. Um, you want to, do you have that on the pen? No, she's giving me that look that she doesn't. Okay, very good. Don't worry about that. Don't worry, it's okay. The song goes like this. My God is so big. My God is so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big. My God is so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his. The rivers are his. The stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. A few months ago, I went back to that community and uh, I was uh, in the grocery store. I was walking down the thing and all of a sudden, <laughs> this little kid stands there and he goes, I thought, I got it. I got the message, you know. Now, what really made me feel old was when the person who already had is, is, is older and has kids looks at me and goes, remember this, Pastor Phil? I'm like, God, I'm getting older. Oh. But, but in reality, that, that, that song, those kids, man, that got impacted in their life. You should hear them. Or you should hear them when you go in and all of a sudden the family says that, you know, you've lost two children and there's no way you're ever going to get pregnant again. And I shared that story with you a few weeks ago, you know. And the mom came to me and she goes, guess what, Pastor Phil, I'm pregnant. I'm going to have twins. You believe it? And what does she say to me? Not a word. She just goes. You see, there's something about planting that seed in the life of others that makes a difference for us. We're called to do that as believers. We're called to plant that seed. You're farmers, you know. Things that happen to us are not just to happen to us and we go away. What happens to us is what we're to live out, we're to share with others, we're to plant that seed of possibility in the lives of those who are struggling, trying to find out what it is that they are to do and sign the things they are and what they're able to do in our life. Why? Because our God is bigger. The challenge is that sometimes you and I fall into a place where all of a sudden we forget to say that kind of thing. As the church, we lose that witness, you know, in, in, in who we are and what it is that we say to one another. The United Methodist Church is a great congregation, great church, everything else. But, you know, a few years ago, we started sinking into a place where all of a sudden we, we well, how do I say it? We, we got to a point where we weren't moving anymore. We were kind of accepting a steady stream of, you know, we're losing members. We're losing churches. This past week, I, I have to tell you that on, on Wednesday night, we had an open invitation for anybody who wanted to come to join us online for a Zoom meeting at seven o'clock. We got another one coming up this Wednesday. But uh, we talked about the fact, what scared me was that we're losing, we've lost a record number of churches this year have closed in the United Methodist Church in Iowa. I mean, we celebrate their ministry, but where did you go? And I understand that God sometimes trimming off the, the fat, you know, all those kinds of things. But in reality, what, what's happened to us? And one of the challenges is that what's happened is we just don't move anymore. And when you don't move anymore, guess what? You become a monument. <laughs> a lot of empty buildings that are monuments to what was. You see, I, I loved it because we had people beginning to talk a little bit and, and turn around say, what it is that we want to do as a congregation? Where do we want to go with this thing? What do we want to put together? How, how do we want to keep our, our faith alive? And how do we want to move out into our communities and become those kinds of, of stations for people in, in their life? Jesus said, we've got a situation, circumstance, 
in our life and in our world. I'm, I'm thankful that this church is trying to deal with this now rather than getting to the point where all of a sudden we become like a submarine where we batten all the hatches and close the doors and prepare to sink. That's great for submarines, but it's lousy for churches. <laughs> That's not who we're called to be. And I give thanks that we're not that way. We've got a Chautauqua coming up here in a few weeks out there in the parking lot, a, a tent where we're doing outdoor service. We've got block parties. We've got stuff we do in order to include our community. We found ways to move out into this community, even by what we're doing today with 13 plus people who are online with us, who are receiving the mission and the ministry of this church. A few years ago, that didn't happen. We were waiting for somebody to come in the door. And now all of a sudden, <laughs> we go to them. That's what Jesus was all about. That's what he tried to talk to his disciples about. Because you know what? He says, it may be hard. It may be difficult. Things happen. But you know what? Nothing's impossible with God. For we're allowed to see the promise of God and the hope of God and all that God does come to us in the right way. All we have to do is to take it to God or take it to the right person. You know, uh, a few months ago, I was coming from the uh, church in Farrar, and uh, all of a sudden I had a flat tire. You may remember that. Well, you may not remember, but anyway, I had a flat tire. I was panicked, the whole thing. I pulled into a driveway, and I thought, you know what? I think this is Julie and Craig Warner's driveway. So I pull in, you know, and all the thing, I flop, flop, flop my tire. And I thought, how could these are brand new tires? How could this be? You know, except looked underneath, and the, the, the flexible, what is it called? The bar? The... Yeah, Bob was there. He knows. The leaf spring broke fit into the tire, cut the tire all up. And here I was sitting there thinking, what in the world to do? Anyway, they got me all fixed up. Is good man, good play. It all worked out well, got it back. I took it to my regular guy and he goes, I'm sorry, we don't deal with those things. I go, well, you fix cars. He goes, we fix cars, but we don't fix leaf springs. I said, where am I to go? He goes, I don't know. You got to find a place that'll deal with that. So I went over, I drove to Indianola. I went everywhere trying to find somebody who could deal with my leaf spring, you know? And I tell you, I had such a terrible time trying to find. Finally, somebody said to me, they go, well, there's only one place that I know in Des Moines. I said, where is that? And they said, it's in downtown Des Moines. It was three blocks from my house. I said, uh, that's all they do are leaf springs. I said, you got to be kidding me. He goes, no, just take it there. I walked in there, man, I tell you, I met this wonderful lady. I tell you what a wonderful time we had. It was like a little church service in there between us. And we, we had a great time. And I learned at that point that if I have a problem, I need to take it to the right place. You know, if you need surgery, you don't take it to a leaf spring mechanic. You go to a doctor. That's what it's all about. You just got to get the right thing for the right time in the right place. A few years ago, I was down in Kansas City at this leadership event. I was down there. To, I had some friends with me and everything else. We went out to eat. And I said to him, I said, you pick out wherever you want to eat. No problem. So they said, we got a place picked out. Now, you couldn't pronounce the name of this place. And when we got there, you couldn't read the menu. And there weren't any prices on the menu, which made me a little nervous. But we went through the whole situation. Of course, I'm trying to be the nice guy. And I just said, I'm picking up the tab for everything. Don't worry about it. You know? And later on the meal, they brought the tab to me. You know, I looked at this thing. I thought, my God, I'm paying off part of the national debt here. And I thought, whatever. So I reached in my pocket and I pulled out my billfold and pulled out the card and I handed it to the guy and here, take this. And he goes over and he's taking care of and everything else, but he didn't come back right away. And I looked over, this guy was sitting by the machine and, you know, and he was talking. And then they got the manager kind of guy over to come over and he's talking to him too. And I thought, what is it? Like they declined or something. And the manager comes over to the table in front of all these people. I couldn't believe it. He said, uh, can I ask you a question? And I thought, uh Oh, Oh, you ever get that feeling? You're just sick. And I said, what, what is it? And he says, uh, you know, he said, are you Phil Dix? I go, yes. He's from Des Moines, Iowa. I said, yes. He goes, well, Mr. Dix, I don't, I don't know about what they accept in Des Moines, but I just want you to know that here in Kansas city, we do not accept blue cross and blue shield cards to pay for meals. And I was like, oh, what? Here, take, try this card instead. <laughs> it, it's that story of the right time, the right place, the right card, putting it where it needs to be. That's what we're all about, man. That's our call. That's who we are as Christians. 
And that's what we're to be in our life. God offers us that. He offers us a prescription. God offers us that there's nothing that I am. All things are possible with me. All you have to do is gift it to me. And then ready for this, Lord, I receive. And look for God's answer that comes to us in the midst of those dark and overshadowed times. Friends, uh, all I can say is that uh, you and I have been given a promise together today. I mean, you and I have been given the opportunity, whether in this church or in our own personal lives, to prepare ourselves to be witnesses of the faith in the world in which we live. Christianity is only one generation. Really, maybe two. If we don't continue the faith, if we don't build the church, if we don't allow God to use us as he's called us to use, if we're not about the task of going through those times of deep water, then we may never ever know the reality and the joy that comes from it happening. Some pastor said to me the other day, he said, do you know the devil can't swim? I said, no. He said, well, why do you think God takes us through deep water sometimes? I said, what? He goes, God takes us through times of deep water because he knows the devil can't swim in those places. God takes it through and says, you know what? I'm taking you through those deep waters, so I'm helping you to mature in your faith. So you become those witnesses. The scripture tells it over and over again. People who say, you know, this is impossible. What do we do with the storm that's coming up? I, I, I want to see again, says blind Bartimaeus. It's the golden thread that runs through people coming and say, this is not possible. Nothing can happen. What do we do with Jesus? We saw him crucified, dead and buried. What can we do? <laughs> and quietly, Jesus says to us over and over again, nothing is impossible with God. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, if God promises to give us life and that life being eternal, that we'll see each other again and our hearts will rejoice and no one will take that joy from us, we have hope with faith. James says in his scripture, when problems and difficulties come into our life, grab a hold of them and hold them for all they're worth because you know what? Those things come in order to lead us into a time of more faithfulness. It leads us into a time of endurance. It leads us in a time where we mature where we move to a place of maturity in our faith and in our trust in Christ. If you look at your grandparents and others, if you look at people on mission fields, if you look at those folks, they are becoming mature in their faith. You turn it over to God and you know our God is able. God redefines for us that the impossible is possible with God. Let's pray together. God, we come before you as those who have uh, found ourselves challenged. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even care about the fullness of God, but, we, but there's something inside of us that hungers for a fuller experience, a deeper walk with Christ. Sometimes, oh God, we settle for ourselves and praying for a light to change or for us to get some money or whatever. And God says, I specialize in loving you and creating you and within you a hunger for more of me. God, as we come before you today, help us to know that we are, we are resurrection people. Help us to know, God, that we are persons who God has invested in each one of us through experiences of life and opportunities for which sometimes we toss aside or we give up on rather than wading into the water and experiencing the depth of your love, of your unconditional love for us and the reality that all things are possible only believe. We've got a plate full of them. And God only knows what we've got coming up this week. We come to church on Sunday morning and the projector doesn't work. We think, how long, oh God? But even in the midst of that, we still have church. 
In the midst of that, we still have faith. In the midst of that, we still have a story to tell about how God was with us and we've seen it manufactured. We see it created in front of us and we give thanks. Be with us this day. Lead us into paths of right living. Help us to be able to speak the word, thy will be done. Help us to release those things that we are holding on to with all of our energy and strength. Help us to dig up again the things that we have buried because they were dead. We pray for a resurrection this week of remembrance, of opportunities for us, oh God, to learn of you, to rejoice in you, and to know that our God is a great big God. For all this, we ask in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're going to do what we do best, and that's pray for others who find themselves in some needs together today. I'm going to go over a list of those. If you have others that you want to add to it, please let me know, and we'll add those names also. I want to pray for uh, Pastor Eldon and Lois. Uh, Pastor Eldon went through the hip replacement, kind of a replacement of a replacement, and uh, up at Mayo and came through good. He's, he's recovering, so let's continue to pray for them, especially for the... That's what they do. They throw you out of the hospital right away. They don't even give you a chance anymore to get pity. I mean, they just send you out, you know? Isn't that what we're talking about today, you know? Move on, you know? Do you imagine what happened if they let us actually stay in the hospital for as long as we want to stay sometimes, you know? Sometimes we have to, but... You know, move it out. Yeah, we'll pray for him for that. Uh, Janice uh, Gregerson, who had her hip surgery uh, this past week. Uh, I, I don't know if she's home yet or if she was maybe coming home. I'm not, not certain. Maybe today's the day for her to show up. I saw a note about her daughter saying that maybe that would be a possibility. Anyone update? No? Okay, no problem. We'll just pray for that. Uh, Sarah Shonrock, uh, that's Jolene Brady's good friend. Uh, a cancer has returned, and uh, we want to pray for her and her family. Uh, for wisdom for the cancer team that are working with her, and also for supernatural healing. That's what we've been preaching about today. Our God is big enough. Our God is able. Pray for our high school graduates. There is a mission possible. I mean to tell you, they're going out there in the world and everything else. I was talking with one of the parents of, the, of one of the kids that graduated, and I just talked what was going on, what was happening. And they gave me the word, and I thought, yes. I'm feeling like there's hope here at the end of the tunnel. Um, this is a great thing. Pray for Nick Cravaro uh, over from the other church. He broke his arm in four places and uh, he's an electrician. So now he gets to sit in the office. I've discovered that electricians don't like to sit in offices. Uh, they like to be doing. And uh, so pray for his patience as his dear wife, Karami said to me. Uh, pray for Kurt Prather, who's usually online with us. Oh, is he today? Kurt, welcome. Good to have you. We'll remember you in prayer. Uh, Kurt has been joining us repeatedly at different times, and he received a, des a diagnosis last week during a procedure that uh, he has uh, cancer uh, in the colon, and so they're going to be doing some surgery and move him forward. It turned out to be malignant, so they're even doing more surgery to get things together, and I talked to him about that, and he goes, I said, are you worried? Are you nervous? No. He said, whatever. You know, God's there. I thought, oh, if you won't come preach to me on Sunday, I mean, works out good. Pray for Terry Holdridge at the other congregation who's continued healing. As part of that, our missionaries in Haiti, uh, Michael Schonenschein uh, and his wife, uh, Hope, um, they're the people who he was shot and while he was driving the vehicle and was airlifted out, life flighted out to uh, New Orleans and I have a video of him this week where he came up and was talking about that, thanking everybody. He's beginning to get some feeling back. And so... Doctor said that it may take months and then we'll see where it ends, but that's a good thing for him. Prayers for our friends in Uganda. We heard from this week, both she and her daughter uh, wrote us to tell us that they're fine. It was short note, but they were still in prayer. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like when the old rockets went up, you know, and they got behind the moon and they couldn't get communication. You had no idea if they made it or not. You know, I've been thinking about praying about them because I thought we've not heard anything, you know, and then when the rest of the world, friends, there are people who are falling apart. I mean, with the COVID thing, it's, it's a really struggle. And so that's good. Thank you. I just thought about that again this morning. I thought, boy, I hope we had a word from that. That's good. By, by the way, today is the 
blessed day to leave a card. I'm going to uh, take that home today and get those packed up uh, with the um, prayer shawl over there. And we've got good stuff over here. Uh, take a moment to see that, put out a card and note and make that happen. We want to pray for our country, the path where we are, the path that we're going, uh, the work of those that we called into leadership who are, are leading for us. Uh, also prayers for our people who are in our, our service, whether here in the nation or around the world. Uh, continue to pray for them, especially, especially the vets who are in needs. Um, I've been I'm dealing with some of that this week. Um, with that post-traumatic stress piece. And I want to just kind of uh, lift that up uh, as part of that. Um, also, prayer for those with COVID, at, not only here, but around the world, and for the vaccinations and all those kinds of things going on. Pray for our daughter, Carla, uh, do that. And I also want you to pray for my niece, uh, Derby. Uh, she was taken to uh, 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 I think Cincinnati or uh, Indianapolis for a surgery. She was born with some challenges uh, and now she's about 13 years old. And now came this surgery they had to do in order to reattach the esophagus and make airways bigger and all kinds of stuff. And it was a long, dangerous, traumatic surgery. And uh, she made it through, she's in a lot of pain. And they brought a pain management team in to try to work with her. And, it's just, it's just a slow struggle and she's got some uh, temperature. I just got that this morning and kind of stuff. So why don't you pray for her, for family, uh, for her father, especially, who was unable to be there with her. And I just, uh, I just ask you to just kind of lift them up in prayer. Okay, prayer requests that we have here are online. We're going to go online first and I'll come right back to you. So what do we have for online? There's a situation. And then also, John mentioned he learned of the passing of his mentor and boss at his former workplace. His name was Jack. Mm. We also have prayer requests from Kevin Borks. Prayers for my niece, Nicole. She's 35 years old in the first stages of breast cancer. Um, Candy, prayers for Rich's brother, Troy. He's 84, kidney recipient five years ago in Mayo after gallbladder surgery. His kidney took a hit from it, and they are grateful and blessed in their beautiful yellow Corvette, 2004 vet trip that they recently had, and they're glad to be home. And let's see if there's anything else. I believe that's it. Let me add for that the prayer for the folks down in Florida. Um, for those that, uh, you know, have gone through this process, those who've lost people, those who are still in that, uh, that vigil to wait and see. We want to just pray for that whole situation down there as part of that. Bob? I'd like to add Oh. oh. Uh, Bob's asking for prayer for his brother and for his sister in law, Margaret, uh, who comes from Georgetown, Texas. And um, his brother had a massive stroke yesterday. And uh, he's re requesting prayer for, for them. 
I'm repeating it for the folks that are online so they get to hear that. Uh, Bob, you had your hand up. Uh, two weeks ago, we prayed for rain and looked like the Lord gave us. <laughs> now, yeah, honestly, it was kind of an impossible situation, wasn't it? Yeah. We'd gone through, we broke records. 125 years since we've had that kind of drought and those high temperatures and everything else, and we did it. And uh, thank you for reminding me. What Bob said was that a few weeks ago, uh, you know, we didn't have anything. And now all of a sudden we've got rain. Yes. And that is a miracle in itself. And, you know, it's coming off at a good pace for us so far. Uh, it's not coming off maybe like they are. And the, the folks you got to pray for in northern Missouri and Kansas, those folks are getting pummeled um, with those type of situations. And some of the other folks who are getting into the, the you know, free fall water and all that kind of stuff that's coming out in that flash flooding. Some of the folks in Southern Iowa who are really getting, you know, hit repeatedly. I'm going to pray for them too, as it, uh, as it goes through with that. Yes. Another prayer request from Candy. Prayers for her mom. She doesn't say anything more. Just continue prayers for her mom, Clara. Okay. And then I like prayers for my cousin who lives in outside of Seattle, um, Washington. They're expected to get up to 106 today, and they're not used to it. There's no air conditioning. So she's been very concerned about that. Well, now this is your who again? Your cousin. Your cousin. And for the heat situation, being able to withstand that, something they've not been part of or referred to as in Washington. So I want to remember them as part of that. Yeah, Dan. prayers for uh diana's sister barb who is uh uh lost her husband and kind of in the process of just putting things together finding new 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 normals uh, as part of that, we just continue to pray for her and for the needs uh, that are there. I'd like you to pray for Darcy also. Uh, Darcy's my niece uh, uh, who uh, lost the baby on Thursday uh, for her and for their family. So please lift them up in prayer. Prayers for Stella Russell, surviving spouse of Reverend Roger Russell. Okay. Ah, and so, her first name again is Stella, Stella Rogers, Stella Russell. Stella Russell. Okay. Stella Russell. Um, and prayers for her. Uh, it would be the wife of a pastor. His name was Roger Russell. Um, who um, just, she kind of deals with that cancer and everything else. Just pray for her. You know, when you lose your spouse, you feel a little alone in that process. So. And the second thing, uh, prayers for the Holy let me tell you wesley was created and made for that um, just shared that uh, you know we want to continue to pray for the churches that have closed and the communities that are out there and that um, the spirit of revival since john wesley's birthday comes tomorrow uh, that we want to put that same spirit of revival back in the communities and in the churches that we serve and in our church too. How about that? Move us to the next level. What we need is to have a Chautauqua or something, a revival service, you know, get ourselves ready to go, put up a tent. Do we have a tent? We could we get Janet to play, you know, all that, man, we could make that happen. And, you know, we should try that maybe July 11th, see what could happen. There you go. I'll talk more about that in a second. With God, all things are possible. Absolutely. With God, all things are possible. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. God, that's the word. 
We do lots of prayer requests around here, but boy, we're going to load them today. But that's okay. That means the spirit is moving and we're getting moving in some of those things. We're offering them up. Even the little things that we may consider little, but to others, it's their life. We have someone to come to who hears and answers prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. It's, we're unable to do it. And that may be a stark reality for some of us because we've always felt we could, but it's like turn it over, gift it over, take it to the Lord in prayer, and that's what we are doing. And God, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have more. We have needs in our life and circumstances and situation. We came here today weary with so many things that has caught our focus and our attention so much so that sometimes we just are so focused on those things that we forget about you as even being the option, the option, the option that you created us with and for to make a difference in the world in which we live so that we might be witnesses of that. So we pray over these requests today and other requests that we have, things that we barricaded, buried, whether we've hidden them in our hearts or in our lives with circumstances and situations, they'll not knock us down. We take it to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, your son, said nothing is impossible. That includes death itself and the hope of eternal resurrection. Your whole ministry, God, from the beginning, talks about that you love us and care for us and nothing is impossible with you. What it's calling us to do is be in a relationship with you. And it's so interesting that the hardest thing in our life is simply to turn ourselves over to the love of God who loves us and created us with an unconditional love. So today, God, we turn those things over. All the baggage we brought here today, we're leaving it right here in this church and on this altar. We're leaving our concerns for friends and family. We're leaving our concerns for worldwide chaos. We're leaving the concerns about our world, our government, with all the things that bring us down. We wake you up so you can extend your hand over all of this and say, peace be still. Give us the ability to see these movements of God, these God winks, and be able to share them with others who also find themselves in turmoil and in captivity to worries, fears, and doubts. God, along with what we've lifted up for you today, there are still things within each one of us that we've just not spoken. There are things that we have in our life, family and grandkids and children, that we just need to have your word spoken over. Acquaintances and friends and family. Speak the word peace, be still. And now, God, in order to reestablish that relationship with you, we want to offer those things over, and then we want to open ourselves to the infilling of your spirit once again, so that your spirit picks us up and carries us, lifts us up, and guides us and directs us, and gives us hope. Hope that's built on nothing less than Jesus. So let us take 30 seconds or so just to quietly, personally, open ourselves to God with needs or to offer up to God our thanksgivings and celebrations. Let's go to God. And now, God, be as we speak the words of the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that we are called to utter, even in moments like this, as we pray together, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. Okay. Uh, remember, uh, we do our worship services at 8 o'clock uh, tonight. Uh, a little mini worship. Please join us for that. Or midweek at 8. Uh, we'll be glad to have you as part of that. Um, we've got about, been about five minutes doing scripture, message, prayer, and all kinds of stuff. Take us with you on your vacation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, our offering. Um, thank you so much for your giftings and your faithfulness. There's offering place in the back today. Please take care of that or get a hold of Teresa and talk to her, and we'll be glad to receive uh, all that you seek to gift over to the ministry of this church. Uh, Chautauqua is coming up. What is Chautauqua? A tent meeting, revival service. We're going to do it in the parking lot and have fun time, and uh, we want to get you all wound up for it. Sunday, July the 11th. Now, the admission is free. You just have to bring somebody with you, all right? I think that's what we decided, but if not, that's what we decided. Bring somebody with you. And if you don't know how to do that, join us Wednesday night at seven o'clock online and uh, use my email, that regular one that we use. And then we'll have a chance to uh, connect with you a little bit again this week and uh, pray for our churches, both of our churches and congregations. Okay, so we're gonna have this little song we're gonna try called Lord Send a Revival. Janet is an expert in this song. So we're gonna try it. The words are, Lord, send a revival, let it start in me. We need most is the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is free. Fill our cup, fill it up as full as it can be. Lord, send a revival, and let it start with me. All right? Very good. Two more weeks of practice that man we'll have this down and ready to roll thank you okay uh next slide a uh, departing song we're going to do a little song called my hope is built on nothing less we're just going to do one verse of it but let's try it together that'll be kind of our faith song as we take out of this place here we go yes so thankful for janet i just have to say that and jerry and our our man at the back rodney for Teresa and bill we all need prayers for everybody today as we go through these wonderful little times of challenge i tell you lead us on okay friends as you go from this place may the spirit and the presence of christ be with you all as you go from this place be rest assured that god's got this huh God said, go out in the world, sense of hope in your life, and live with expectation. For this we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and everybody said, amen. amen. Friends, go be the church. Go be the church. Yes, amen. Get out of here. Go be the church. Come on, get out. Go. Lord, send your revival. Let it start with me. What we need most is the Holy Ghost.
There we go. Can you all hear me? Fine, I get this thing back in order here. It's good to have all of you here together today. Let me see, I gotta pull up the sheet here so I can see exactly everybody who's here. Oh, very good. Kevin, good to have you here today. Thank you, my friend. You're for being part of that. I think you're, I think you're muted, Kevin. Yeah. We had planned on coming in today, but we got busy outside and didn't make it. <laughs> it's okay. It's summer and we're doing take us on vacation. Well, we'll be there. Good. We'll be there next week and definitely the 